All right, good morning traders. Uh, welcome to the uh, Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, today we have Scott Pulsini, and uh, good morning everybody. Good morning Jerry, good morning Stefano. Um, uh, today we have Scott Pulsini. We had him back also in September, uh, but uh, uh, have him back again. He did a, a fantastic webinar uh, for us and uh, uh, really happy to have him back here. Uh, he's got just a tremendous amount of trading experience and order flow uh, experience. I used to use heavily the dome uh, back in the day. So, uh, you know, over 20 years of experience here, um, uh, you know, and, and then a really, really rich and interesting history as well. Uh, during the years from uh, 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume. Okay, we're talking about a tremendous amount of volume here. Uh, that just it's still just I, it mi is mind-boggling for me just to to imagine like one tick is probably worth about seven to ten thousand dollars one tick uh, of movement um, anyway uh, now Scott focuses on both trading equities and futures like I said expert scalper uh, with an innate ability to very quickly uh, read the order flow and and um, uh, volume and, and within the price patterns and uh, and and execute Okay, very, very capable. Uh, you have our book map contact information here. Risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And uh, let's go through this here. Uh, uh, here, if you're interested in uh, reaching out to Scott, uh, I've put this into the chat for you. Yep. Whoops, I'm sorry. Hello? Okay. All right. You got me? Yeah, I got you now. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I lost literally every one of my screenshots right as we were going on, so I had to go back and do it all over again. So a little, little rattled, but... No, no worries at all. So we hear you. We see your screen. We see your daughters there. Um, awesome. And, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're good to go. Cool. Yeah, if you want to put up, you can put up, I'll tell, you know, I'll go over a little bit about myself quickly. Um, you want to put that screen back up with my info on there? Um, or do I have to do that? Oh, uh, yeah, you would have to uh, give me, I'll, I'll have to take back the presentation if. Uh, uh, okay, not a big deal. I'll, I'll just, I'll just go over it quickly. Um, okay. So my name is Scott Pulsini. Uh, I've done a couple webinars with Bookmap so far. And, um my backstory is, uh, you know, I used to be a uh, very large scalper in the E-mini S&P. Um, as far as when I say scalper, I, I literally mean, you know, second by second. I was a, um, you know, major market maker where I, I was on basically every tick all day long, uh, every day. So, um, you know, I got my start uh, around 2001, right before 9-11, and um, I had started working for, I worked at the Board of Trade for about four years as an ARB clerk, so I kind of learned uh, the ins and outs of, of trading, especially the stressful side of things, because that's the uh, most stress you can ever deal with working for brokers, where if you make a mistake, you know, you can cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in a, in a second. So kind of got my uh, feet wet there and then uh, went over to a firm uh, that my friend got me into called King Street Trading. and. Back then, they just uh, threw you in front of the uh, trading screen and, you know, hope you can figure it out. There was no education whatsoever as far as electronic trading because, you know, it was brand new back then. So I was thrown in front of the screen, uh, thrown in front of the E-mini S&P market and the NASDAQ market and, you know, told to figure it out. And I <laughs> literally tried to figure it out. The very first day, I, uh, I lost $2,500 trading one lots. Um, scalping one lots which anybody that uh, trades knows that is very very difficult to do on the on the bad side of things so um, needless to say I was on the brink of getting fired and 9-11 happened and I started to uh, you know I wanted to practice they closed the US markets for a week so I wanted to get some uh, practice and figure out what the hell I was doing so I went over to the uh, German DAX overnight and started trading that um, just again, just to you know, get some experience, and I started seeing some tendencies, uh, you know, in, in that market, which was pretty crazy back then. Um, you know, I, I guess I can compare it now to like maybe like the Nasdaq as far as how it moved or uh, the Mini Russell. But so I learned some 
tips and tricks there. And then when the uh, E-mini or the stocks opened back up for trading after 9-11, I started to trade uh, the E-mini S&P again. And it, the light just went on as far as what I was seeing with the order flow coming in the book. And um, I was so confident what I was doing. You know, I was literally within days of getting fired. I went up to the, the, uh, the boss or the uh, owner of the firm and told him that, uh, I was so confident, you know, and I was only making at that point, I don't, I don't mean to say only because it's still a lot of money, but I was making 500000 a day, um, which wasn't a lot because a lot of traders there were making millions. So I was so confident, I figured out, I went and made the uh, owner of the firm up a wager that I would be the number one trader in the following year. I think the trader back then made uh, that in 2001, or, yeah, 2001, he had made like 2.8 million bucks or something like that. And or 2.5 million. So anyway, I made him the bet, and I was that sure that I had figured it out, you know, by reading order flow that the following year I, I actually did it and won the bet. I made uh, 2.8 million my first year. Um, and then in 2003, I made 10 million. And in 2004, I made 1.8 million. So you're talking about $15 million. And this this is after commission, mind you. This isn't uh, this isn't pre-commission. And you can imagine the commissions I was paying. I mean, yeah, we had a really good deal. Uh, because we were the we were the, like the top buying firm in the country, um, so you know, I still was trading fifty thousand contracts every day uh, on average, especially you know around two thousand three two thousand four. So um, back then, that was ten percent of the the world volume in the mini S and P every day. So you know, they, back then they traded about five hundred thousand shares uh, or contracts a day and I was 50,000 of those uh, round terms. So that just shows you, um, you know, and again, I'm not saying this to brag because when you hear the rest of the story, it's not as uh, <laughs> as um, fairy tale like but uh, I'm telling you just because I, I got so much market uh, information by watching, sitting, watching it every single day, watching every tick go through the market that, um, that when it comes to order flow reading, knowing what works, what doesn't work, I I basically know. So um, that's why I tell that story. So fast forward, you know, 2005, 2006 is when the volatility, you know, went just dropped to the floor. I think it was like a 10, 11, or 12. And you couple that with the computer algorithms that took over, were starting to take over the marketplace which I had not seen up till then. You know, I, at the time I was one of the fastest in the world clicking a mouse, and but I was not as fast as a computer as you can imagine. So the low volatility coupled with these algorithms just literally blew me out. So, you know, you would see a price, you'd go to click on it, you'd miss it. You go to click on another price, you'd miss it. You'd have resting orders in, kind of like this is actually a good example of what it used to be like, how it's trading right now with, with the tweets that come out. That's what it would do. But the problem, the problem back then was that it wouldn't, um, the trade would, it would, um, I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Oh, so back then, because of low volatility, you would get run over like this, like it's trading, you know, with these tweets, but then it wouldn't trade again the rest of the day. So I would get run over, I'd lose, you know, 300 grand, and then I'd just be sitting there with no opportunity to make any kind of money. So um, that, that it just, just ruined me. So I literally went from making millions of dollars to zero overnight. Um, uh, so, get this out of there. Um, so and then I spent the next, you know, seven, eight years <laughs> literally trying to reinvent my style and, you know, trade a little longer term, not, not do days, but, you know, hours, minutes, hours, that was long term for me. Um, so, you know, basically I, I was just at my wit's end where I just couldn't make money. And I'm sure, I know a lot of traders from back then went through the same type of thing where it was, you know, it was very easy at one point. But um, so, you know, I, I traded kind of sporadically over the, the following years, I'd say 2013 to 2016, and I started getting back into it again. Um, and then I was introduced to Bookmap by a uh, by Dr. Brett Steenbarger, who Actually, when in my heyday, um, he sat behind me for a year to see, you know, what made me tick and why why I was, you know, why I excelled at what I did, and um, he actually wrote wrote a book, uh, enhancing trader performance, and he put me, th you know, throughout the book and then the afterwards. So if you ever want to read my trials and tribulations and you know my rise and fall, it, it's all in there. But and it's a great book for trading too, as well. So. 
Um, anyway, fast forward today, and uh, Dr. Brett and I have always kept in touch. He's, you know, he's always been my biggest cheerleader, wanted me to get back on top, and he introduced me to this program called Bookmap. And the minute I saw it, I, I was just blown away. I, I knew this was the missing piece that I could not see because, as anyone knows, um, and I've actually, since I've been doing these webinars, I've been hearing from more and more people that claim they can, they're trying to trade the, the dome, you know, depth of market, which is in my opinion, impossible, right? So if I'm saying it's impossible, it's probably pretty damn hard because I was, you know, lightning fast. My my processing, mental processing is obviously above average. So for what I was able to do in the past. So if I'm saying it's impossible, it's it's pretty hard. So anyway, I still had these traders contacting me how, you know, that they're trying to trade off the, the dome. And so anyway, I you know, I've tried that many, many, many years and it just does not work because the difference between nowadays and before in the past was now in the past, if you saw size in the book, meaning big orders, they were real. People really wanted to trade those orders, right? And you can lean on those orders. So if you wanted to sell the market at a price and you looked up and you know above the market and you see three thousand, two thousand, three thousand, I'm talking e mini S P now. Um, you can sell, and then if you were wrong, you can buy into that size, which is really important when you become a bigger trader, right? So um, now fast forward to today again. Today's the book is is meaningless most times, right? I mean, everyone could attest to this, where you see you know thousands sitting in the book, and you're all excited that you know someone's willing to sell, and then it comes up to that price, and it pulls, and it's a five lot, and then there's five lots for the next. 12 ticks and then you get an air pocket right and then you stopped out so that's the point like the size in the in the book is not legitimate in the dome in my opinion um, and I'm sure everyone could agree so anyway back, back to book map is you know when I saw this program I was absolutely blown away with it immediately let me showed me that I was on a level playing field with this algorithm these algorithms right because when you're able to see this liquidity in when it's real, when it's willing to sit in the book for a long period of time, when it's willing to sit in the book when Mark comes up to it, uh, as opposed to you can see when they're putting in polling, putting in polling, that is that is you know that is the missing piece of information that traders need to compete with these algorithms, um, you know, in, in, in the present. So, you know, algorithms. I think the last stat I saw was there's 70 percent of all market action. It's probably higher than that, I would guess. But nowadays, I mean, this was you know a year or two ago. Um, so in, in my eyes, unless you write programs, you know, if you're a click trader, there, this is the missing piece of information you need to be competitive with these algorithms. You know, and I, again, I, I've seen it all, I've done it all, I, I know, I know market flow, and I know, you know, order flow, and I've never seen anything like this. This that lays it out for you, where you can actually see the games that are being played and know what's legitimate and what's not legitimate. So. Um, so anyway, it's just been, you know, I've only been using Bookmap for about five, six months now, but, and I have an absolute ton to learn. I don't claim to be an expert by any means. I do claim to be somewhat of an expert as far as knowing the games that are played in the market, um, because I used to play those games. So that's why I know, right? So I know my whole basis of trading is one, keep it simple, be, you know, because that's what it is. And I look for areas that traders get caught and you know where there's big participants, and when they're wrong, they have to puke out their positions. And again, I know this firsthand because, you know, Bruce has asked me before, what was what was I able to trade size wise? And back in my heyday, I would I can trade my firm would allow me to trade up to three thousand e mini S and P's at one time. And the story I always tell is, um, and it's sad to say, the only time I ever had three thousand e mini S and P's on when, when I was wrong, right? So when you know I would I would buy, and then the market would come down a little more, and I'd buy some more. And then it wouldn't go. And then, you know, I just start trying to defend my position where I just put some resting orders, you know, 500,000, 500,000 below, trying to hold the market up. And then when it went, you know, I'd sit there and, and crap my pants for a couple seconds. You know, I'm sure every trader can attest. And then I'd have to puke the position because you just can't take that kind of heat, right? I'm looking, you're looking at, you know, 100, 200, 300,000 dollars I was about to lose if I didn't get out of that, get out of that position. So my whole point is that's what, I look for in the markets, I look for those areas, and that's what Bookmap helps you do, along with some relative volume things that I look at that I'll, that I'll point out here. But Bookmap puts you on a level playing field where you, know, you can know where guys are, are in trouble and take advantage of that. And you can apply that to any methodology you use, right? So I, I'm always preaching on these webinars where I'm not trying to teach you to trade like me, um, per se, like as far as 
you know, exact setups I, I use and, you know, the simplicity of what I look at, you, know, you can do whatever you're using, market profile, um, tick charts, and any, anything that you look at is perfectly fine if it make, you, you need to find something that makes sense to you first and foremost. And then all you do is you add in this volume, real-time volume, which is, is what drives markets, right? Price doesn't drive markets. Fibonacci levels um, don't drive markets. You know, lines on the chart don't you know, moving averages, those don't drive markets. Yes, you see you see markets react at those areas, but they're reacting because of real-time volume coming in. So the whole point is you want to know if your areas are legitimate by the real-time volume that's coming in and how to read that real-time volume, and that's what Bookmap allows you to do. So again, it's I, I can't say enough about it. Um, you know, I basically approached Bruce and just told him how much I loved it, and then that's when he asked me to start doing webinars. But that's basically the extent. I mean, I'm just a, I'm just a loyal follower and you know again I can't wait to learn they are adding so many things or just so many things that were already in this program that I don't even know about it's very exciting but just the basics you can compete right you can compete in the marketplace with these algos and that's that's the most important thing so maybe stepped away okay um, I'll go over some of these um, some of these actual um, trades or market patterns. So not all these are trades that, I, that I've taken. I've taken a majority of them. But the point is not, again, I'm not trying to say, first of all, I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm a thousand lot trader anymore, right? I, I'm pretty small comparatively what I was. And you know, I'm, ba I'm basically building myself up again, right? I mean, I'm, I'm successful, but I'm not, you know, I'm not making $10 million a year like I used to. It's my goal. But so my point is, when I'm showing you this Stuff. It's not to say, hey, here's my trades. Do what I do. It's to show you, hey, look, look at look at what I look at. Look at why this is relevant and how you can apply it to your trading. Um, so, you know, I want to start off with, uh, you know, went from dead just watching paint dry on a wall to rip your head off moves when Trump Hello, decides bro. to tweet or China says something. So, it, I like to, I want to leave with this because. I look for more structure in my trading, meaning areas that make sense, like VWAP or daily value area and stuff like that. Um, but there's going to be times where, you know, you get these ridiculous moves out of nowhere, and instead of just sitting there stewing that you missed it, there there are opportunities to get long. So this is why Bookmap is so important. So this was yesterday, right? So I always use very current examples as well because. Um, Actually, was it? No, this was today. So I'm sorry. So my charts might be off because again, I lost everything right before I uh, I came on. No, this was yesterday. I'm sorry. This was because I screenshot it this morning. But um, I went back and screenshot. So yesterday, one of the Trump tweets. Again, I apologize for this being so uh, not coherent because I had to go back and reload all of these while Bruce was talking because I lost them right before the webinar. But so this was the move. Um, the Trump with the E-mini S&P ripped as well. Uh, we'll look at that. But seeing yourself, now if you're looking at a bar chart, you're saying to yourself, where, where do I get in on this? You know, do I buy right here? Do I, you know, I don't want to miss this going up another dollar. And the thing is with bar charts, you, you can't really know, right? I mean, you're just going to blindly buy. I mean, where, where in this bar are you going to buy that makes sense risk reward wise, right? That's what trading is. You always got to make sure that it's making sense risk reward wise, meaning you're risking one to make three, four, five, six, or more, right? You're not risking one to make one. And I know there's a lot of traders out there. I've been I've been mentoring traders as well that tell me they're you know they're, they're looking they're risking you know two points to make two points. And I'm telling you right now, you will not be around very long by doing that. You just cannot do that in, in these marketplaces these days with the algorithms. You just cannot do it, especially when you're paying three, four dollars commission around turn. It's a bot. I'm telling you, if you if you can do it and you can show me statements for a year's worth of trading that you that you've made, you know, very good money, I would love to meet you. Please send me your information because take it from me, it is impossible to trade that short, you know, that one to one and make a living doing this. Okay, in my opinion. Um, so the whole point is you want multiple. So anyway, where, where do you buy on this on this bar? So when you go, so uh, you look at book map. I mean, uh, the this is thinker swim as well. So a uh, quick thing before we get into this. So what I look at, I have this is just these are all defaults on thinker swim. I think you can open an account for nothing. If anything, you can put a hundred bucks in and then pull it back out, and then you have you have chart access, right? So this is literally think or swim. This is literally default settings, right? So this is the VWAP. This is the daily value arrow we call, and I've learned this from uh, S&P futures. 
um, which I always give a plug to because I've learned a lot from Merrick Black on the future side and then also I've learned a ton on the stock side which we'll get into as well because you want to be able to you want to have stocks in your arsenal um, because you know when, this, when markets aren't doing this when they're doing this for days at a time you want to be able to move to an, another another instrument um, but uh, the stock stock training on from um, SMB it's S as in Sam M as in Mary B as in boy um, just Google them they're all over the place they are legitimate and they're they've taught me so much you know and I'm a 20-year trading veteran so if you want to learn about stocks and even futures to go to them but anyway so th this is what Merrick teaches a little bit is the daily value rate. but all I use is the VWAP daily value rate, and I look at relative volume that's basically my trading and I look at a little market structure as far as market market profile but not in the sense where you're cutting off cumulative value areas you know as an art where it's more I'm looking for you know high volume areas or the top of balance areas bottom of balance areas things like that okay sorry I keep getting off the subject here so anyway this was the move um, again where do you buy here I, you, you, you if, unless you want to buy here and risk all the way down here risking 40 cents then there's you can't really tell unless you use book map right so this is what it looked at like a book map again so this isn't this isn't a normal trade for me um, and I really don't take these but this one this is just to show you that you know if you're trying to take advantage of the news you can right so this was the news that came out the that saying they reached uh, stage three or whatever it was and again it doesn't matter what it is it matters what the market's doing right so again you see it blow through the, so the liquidity for people that don't know our liquidity is resting orders in the book and the darker the red um, or orange whatever color this is I'm colorblind and so that's why my bubbles on the book map are red and blue instead of red and green just because I can't uh, tell the difference um, in case people are wondering about that but everything else is basic default on book map as well but anyway these lines represent liquidity right so this is kind of scrunched just because this move is so drastic as you saw by that bar chart but as it rips through all of this liquidity where do you get in right so for me what I've learned by watching you know countless hours of book map and the replay and everything else and I'm going to show you replay at the end as well but there you know you do you really want to buy here 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 first of all you probably couldn't have because it was so fast but even here I mean you want to wait you want to wait for a pullback to find out if the buyers are going to engage again if not you're going to end up buying here and you're going to watch come all the way back here right I could and I actually did it today I'm going to show you that uh, later one of my examples coming up here but that's exactly what it did today but the point is if it blows through all this liquidity the way you have to think about it the way I think about it and again I know because this used to happen to me is these guys are loaded up imagine if you have resting orders here right you have thousands 500 whatever whatever the size was that it blew through here imagine that you that got that taken from you and you had no chance to get out like none and you know you're, you're holding your breath right so anytime it comes back you're like oh please God just come back a little bit and I'm out right that's how you have to think because that's what's happening even if it's an algorithm some are set up like this but you can see here when it pulls back it stops right in this area the minute you see the blue come back in you can buy and then risk down here right so again this is all about risk reward so if you're waiting in that conviction bar you know this bar here and you're trying to find a spot to get in this is the spot right so the minute you see a pullback and then the buyer again you don't just buy it blindly right you could if you're really aggressive but I want to see the buyers engage again so you wait for the selling here comes the buying again you buy right here anywhere in here you can put your stop right here so what's this 30 30 to 34 you can risk down to 20 right so this is about 20 right here so you're talking 15 ticks because if this goes again this is fuel to the fire so these all these guys I got run over try to get out of some and they can't and they got to chase it up again so again risk reward you're risking 15 ticks you're telling yourself okay I'm gonna try to hold to this next liquidity because as you see in the book this was the main liquidity that's been in here for a long time meaning this is the most real liquidity right so this was some too it's just you know not as heavy as this but the point is you're getting in here saying okay I'm, I'm buying at 30 and I'm risking I want I want to see if I can get at least two to one on my trade two three to one right so the first liquidity level that I would consider getting out at is this one and you can see as it came up here the sellers came in you could have sold right here right so again I, I don't usually take this trade it's because I just I just don't I'm just not that aggressive in my trading as far as what I want to risk but uh, I need to see a little more structure but for people that want to know hey how do I get involved in these 
these tweets that are coming out, this is a perfect example. And this can go for any market, right? You, you see areas that are blown through. You know guys are caught. When it comes back in and then they re-engage, that's when you get in and you ride it, right, until you see the sellers come back in. So, again, it, this my trading is very simple, and I highly recommend you simplify yours as much as possible, as, at least with the order flow, right, at least with this stuff. So, anyway, so this was um, later in the day. So, that was that move here that we caught, right, and lo and behold, that was the high or that I pointed out where you could have bought. So, this is my type of trade, right? So, I'm looking, this is VWAP right here. Um, so, I'm looking for a move back down to VWAP, and I want to see again, and I'm going to show you why you need to see the volume confirmation and not just blindly buying here at VWAP. Again, you can, right, and you're going to be right some of the times. That's why trading is it's so lucrative, right, because sometimes you're right, but a lot of times you're wrong. Don't you want to know why you're right and why you're wrong? This this is what Bookmap tells you, right? If you're just buying off a chart, sometimes it'll bounce off VWAP and it'll go all the way back up to the daily value or high. Sometimes it'll rip right through, right? What, what makes the difference? That's what I want to know, right? I want to know why I, I can, I'm only right half the time and the other half they don't work, right? Because the more conviction you can have in your trade, the, the, the better you're going to be and the bigger size you can put on with confidence, right? So, again, this comes down to, to VWAP. And then on the book map, so this is exactly what it looked like, right? So this is VWAP. So first area of liquidity, this wasn't as heavy as this, obviously, but you see heavy selling come through. It tries, it tries to rebound. Doesn't really do it. I mean, if you're aggressive, yes, you could have bought right here. Um, but then, you know, you, you want to see, because this already blew through this. So I want to see it, how it reacts. So it blows through this right here. It, it rejects. It comes through, they're still selling, a little buying, and then kind of just, you know, I, I bought right here before, but I didn't buy here. I actually I actually got in right here for once. I actually had a really good fill. But so anyway, it comes down here, and then it reengages here, but you can see now as it comes into this really heavy liquidity, um, which, again, was it was right on VWAP or just below it, but look at the difference between the selling here. So you have heavy selling here, and then look at the difference. The, with the selling as far as the size of the bubbles, right? So not only are you getting less selling as far as aggressiveness and buyers are fighting back, and it's still red, but buyers are obviously fighting back because, you know, it's not as big of a heavy as seller or aggressive selling. But then you can lean on this resting liquidity in the book as well, right? Which, it, you know, it's 166. When you're just looking at this, you're thinking, well, 166 isn't that much. But Relatively speaking, it is that much. That's why this is such, a, and that's what the algorithm for Bookmap is based off of. So you can feel confident that this is a lot of volume in the crude market, right? So anyway, the minute you see the buying, and again, huge bubble, biggest bubble, bigger than this bubble, probably bigger than this one as well. But it's just one of the biggest bubbles in this whole area. You can get long. You risk just below here. Again, there's going to be times where it'll turn around and it'll sell through it. But the point is, you have you have a lot of confluent factors here that you can take this trade. So you see the buying, you get in, you know, VWAP's right there, and then you also have this heavy liquidity that you can lean on. So you're risking, you buy right here, you're buying between 16 and 18, you're risking down to, you know, 12, or even if you want to put it below this liquidity, you're risking down to 8. So you're risking 8 to 10 ticks. If you're right, you know, you're going to be making, it. this market's going back to this these areas, right, where this heavier liquidity is. It's just that's just how the markets work. So the, the other thing is you want to, again, the relative volume is really important, right? So on this move up, on this tweet, this relative volume was almost eight times normal volume. That is very significant, and this is what I look for, right? I don't just usually buy at VWAP. I want to see an area either in the past, that high relative volume, because, again, the guys that bought here, or got run over here, I should say sell, I'm sorry, that got run over by the buyers, now they're going to, again, the ones that were able to hold on and hold their breath long enough, when it came back down, they're out, right? Especially in an area that makes sense to most traders, that most most funds and, and people look at as VWAP, right? So, again, I look for heavy volume, relative volume, and then areas where I can, I can you know, engage as long as the real-time volume is showing me that the buyers are, the sellers are either losing or the buyers are engaging, right? So that's why I got long in this area. And then, that was that. 
No, a question like uh, from the very get go was um, about when you started trading uh, back, you know, uh, back in the day. Like, uh, what were you, what the what were the tools you were using? Like, just time and sales in in, in the dome. I was literally using. I would really even have a chart up, and I'm not exaggerating. I would stare at the dome all day, every day. I would not take a break. Um, I mean, I would. I would, when it would die down, I'd walk across the street. There was a subway across the street. I'd grab a subway and get back in front of my screen. So I literally stared at the dome tick for tick every day for four plus years. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. intense. Um, okay. What you have to do, right? You, you have to do that if you want to be a, a, a effective scalper. I mean, you have to know exactly what's coming in the market at all times, right? So that's what I'm saying. When I, you know, when I talk, I, I don't claim to be, you know, some guru to this day what i'm saying is the things i'm telling you about bookmap about what it's showing you what's really happening and also not be able to just stare at the dome um and, and, make, and make trades and be successful that's when that's when you should listen to my my opinion mm -hmm. okay okay um uh there's a question here about the you know um watching time and sales and using maybe footprint chart as well uh, footprint charts, if or market delta charts, what you probably are, are aware of, um, but uh, it, you know it's showing it's showing the volume very precisely at price levels that you know the transactions. It's 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 in a bar, uh, an aggregated bar of data, um, but uh, you know I'm wondering if they're, they're asking if you use that as well. No, I I, I use um, programs like that before. You know, I don't want to plug any other programs, but software you know software that read the you know, the cumulative volume and things like that, I just was not effective. You know, I was average, a little below average probably. I was just wasn't effective enough um, where, you know, you'll see a big bar and, you know, so for instance, you'll see this bar and you'll see the um, the volume, the, the cumulative volume was plus, you know, 3,000, you know, buyers over sellers, meaning there's always the same amount of sellers and buyers in the market, meaning who is the aggressor, right? So, okay, that was great to know, but I can see that right here with the bar. Like, that doesn't help me. That doesn't help me make decisions in certain areas per se, right? So, again, there, I'm sure there's some people that can use programs like that and be successful. I, I just couldn't. I mean, I just was not a, an elite trader using those things. And what, I, what I'm telling you is Bookmap will bring you to the next level. I will, you know, absolutely guarantee it. <laughs> Wow, that's that's uh, that's really nice to hear. Uh, I I totally agree. I mean, during during the webinars, like um, uh, uh you know, we make the point like, uh, well, I mean, yeah, if those tools work, that's great. But they're they're just they're missing things. Um, there's data that is missing from it. First, it's aggregated, um, and uh, uh it, so uh, nuances in in the structure and volume within that structure is not seen. Plus, there's just simply no liquidity in there at all. You, you don't you don't see it, right? So there's no context to the order book within it. Right, exactly, exactly. You don't know what areas are legitimate, what areas are not legitimate. It's great you can see what transacted there in a certain type of way, but you don't really know. You, you can you can't really see real time like how the market responds when or how the, how these orders respond when the markets get there and whether they pull it, whether they engage, whether the sellers hit it hard and don't win. And I mean, there's just, again, it, it's like nothing I've ever seen. Right, right. Well, that's very, really, really nice to hear. It makes us, makes us blush over here at Bookmap, uh, let me tell you. So. <laughs> and you should. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, let's see, this is a really good question. Um, and we, we do cover it like in the, in the, in the webinars as well. Uh, about anticipating when the aggressors might be hitting the bid or lifting the offer with a massive amount. Uh, is that, like, I, I did answer it in, in the questions here, but uh, would, would like to get your, your uh, response as well. Like, how, how do you yeah. anticipate that? How do, I, how do I anticipate big orders coming in? Yeah. I mean, I really don't anticipate it. I, I wait to see the big orders come in. Right. So, I mean, this is an example, right? So you're looking at, you know, you know, the size of the bubbles, one tells you how aggressive these sellers are being versus like, this is an example I just showed, right? A right. heavy selling here. And then look at the difference between the size of the bubbles, that alone. But then if you start to incorporate some relative volume in there and you see this is much higher volume than normal, um, things like that. But again, make it as, don't confuse yourself, right? I mean, 
I, this will be the third time I've used this example. I can put my eight-year-old daughter in front of the screen here and ask her what is happening, and she'll say, well, the, the red bubbles are really big here, and they're really small here, and then I see the blue, so I'm going to go with the blue, right? So it's like that. I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but the, the simpler you can make your trading to make sense for you of what's going on in the order flow, the better you're going to do, right? When you start adding in all these layers of nonsense, all these lines and, you know, indicators and everything else, what I'm telling you is you don't need them, right? You, you, you can use them, but you better be using this, or again, like you just said, you don't have all the information. You're not trading with all the information. When you're going against the brightest minds in the world, you probably want to have all the information. Right, right. Um, uh, exactly. I mean, like, uh, uh, an another question here, Peter is asking, do you ever look at the dome any anymore? I look at the dome when I put my order in, <laughs> and put, okay. my, put my stops in. That's it. I, it is, it's worthless. It, it's, in my mind, again, this is all my opinion. Many traders might have different opinions. In my opinion, it is absolutely worthless. All it does is drive you crazy, and it doesn't give you any information. It's so fleeting. It's so fast half the time. The stuff that's pulling, putting in, pulling, and putting in, you know, granted, yeah, the, an order might sit there, but then when it comes down to it, did it really get hit? Did, it, did they pull it? Right, because it happens so fast. A lot of times, you can't tell if it traded. You know, you can't tell how much of it traded. When you have this, you can see. You know, if there was, if there was, you know, a a, a two hundred lot right here, you know that thing just, you know, it really got hit, right? So that that that's the difference between looking at this or looking at the order book. Right, right, right. Um, excellent. Uh, no, really, really nice to hear. Um, I, I think that's it for now, and uh, I'll keep I'll uh, keep an eye on the uh, questions here and interrupt you if. Uh, okay. So how how long do I have? Because I have a you know again I cost myself 15 minutes because I lost all my charts. I mean, do you want I can keep going? I don't have anywhere to be. I just don't know if you need to cut this off at a certain time. Um, I, I would like to continue on and and do a regular uh, webinar with you, um, and maybe I can go back and and uh, edit out some of those pieces. So uh, so continue okay. on. No 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 worry, Scott. Okay, um, so back to this example. So this is where I was showing that I personally got long yesterday for this trade, um, and that was at the VWAP. Um, again, I didn't get long personally on this move because, you know, again, it happened pretty fast, but I'm just showing the traders that, like, that want to be involved in these tweets, this is somewhere you can be involved. Okay, so this one I did get in, and so then you're saying, where do you get out, right? So I got in right here. And I already showed the context for that. So I was in my mind saying this needs to go back up to daily value area high. So again, all these, all these, these both these lines are just two standard deviations from VWAP, right? They're, but they're very effective because this is what a lot of algos are using. This is where mutual funds are and uh, hedge funds are using, um, you know, to base their trades, to base their exits, and even more so in stocks, uh, but there, I mean, you can see kind of like, you know, kind of went up with it, but then when it's stabilized, this is exactly where it bounced off up here. But anyway, so my my original target, so this is another reason why Bookmap is so incredible, right? So if I'm trading off the chart and I buy VWAP and this time I'm right, right? You know, out of my 50% of the times I'm right when I do this, right? So and I'm, I have my good risk reward, so I'm saying, okay, I'm risking you know, 10, my 10 ticks, like I showed you, and I'm, I'm trying to get up to 70 here, right? So I'm risking, I'm buying around 20 and I'm trying to get to 70. So I'm risking 10 ticks to make 50, right? Five to one, beautiful, great. So what, hap what happens when it doesn't get up here, right? H how do I know this is an area where I should be paying attention to because it never got here, right? So yes, I want it to get here and what you want is one thing and what's really happening is another, right? So. <laughs> Why could this area be significant on the chart? It could be significant because this is kind of an imbalance area here. When I say balance area, I'm talking about two-sided trade, and it broke down from, right? But when I'm just looking at the chart, I'm thinking, this doesn't look that significant where the market would just literally just stop six, seven times right here, right? But it did. So it doesn't matter what I think in the end. It matters what's really happening. So my point is, if you're looking at a chart and you're trying to stay in this trade, you're like, Okay, this isn't that big of a deal. I, I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna hold to this. I'm gonna hold till 59.69 the DVA, right? And then you end up, it comes all the way back. You get stopped out, right? So, this is why again, book map is incredible, right? So, this is when I got out. So again, I'm, I'm hoping it gets to 70. I'm hoping it gets up here. But when you see stuff like this, so here's a liquidity. This was looking great right here, great right here. I blew through. I'm golden. Then I see this, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> 
like this this is not what you want to see you don't want to see look at the size of this cell this cell bubble here after it tried to bust through liquidity so you have guys that just bought here bought here now you get a heavy aggressive seller right so you had aggressive buyer aggressive buyer again imagine this is you buying this you buy 200 you buy 300 it's immediately in your face and now you see someone just hammering it you're thinking to yourself if you're the buyer here you're like um this is what i was expecting right and this wasn't what i was expecting either so when i saw this and i saw this this moved down so quickly i'm like okay well i want to see what it does when it gets back up here um you know because it by that time it already come down you know around 40 now i'm only looking at i had a one-to-one -one trade so i was like okay well i'm i'm not getting out at one-to-one -one. i'm gonna at least see if i can get a little more out of this i want to see i'm hoping so sometimes it doesn't do this right sometimes it comes right back and that's just I mean, if you were sharp enough, you could have got out right here. I was not because, again, a lot of times, and every trader can attest to this as well, you are you don't want to believe this is ending, right? You're thinking, ah, no, this is just one seller, big deal, right? So it comes down here, and then when it came back up here, I see less buying, less buying, and I see sellers engaging. It can't really do it. So when I saw this right here, so I saw this liquidity got put in, I saw somebody hit the liquidity again, I got out. Right, so I ended up making like 26 ticks, risking 10, you know, 2.6 ratio, which isn't great. But again, just because you want five to one doesn't mean you're going to get five to one. Yes, you want to, you don't want to get out for no reason. But if you see a reason to get out, then you get out, right? So again, I got 2.6 to one. But when I saw this, I was out. And yes, it did come back a little bit, but it never went any anywhere higher, right? So or much higher, I should say. You could see here. You know, it just kind of balance, 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 and then it sold off. So I got out, and I was okay with it. And again, real time volume showed me exactly what was happening. I this is not what the market does when it continues to rip higher. It just doesn't, especially when they're winning. This guy, hit, these traders hit. These guys bought wrong. These guys hit right. Came up here. No one engages. No big buying. Guys hit again. That's when I got out. I wasn't playing around with it. And I'm done. On to the next trade, right? Again, there are so many opportunities, especially with Bookmap, especially when you start adding in extra instru instruments like stocks and things like that, where you don't need to bang your head against the wall, you know, trying to force this trade to hope pray it goes up to seventy. Just get out. You're out of it. Move on to the next opportunity. Yeah, that, that's that's a really good point. In, in fact, um, you know, when we had the uh, the the advanced uh, webinars, uh, you know, uh, last week. Uh, or you know a few weeks ago and 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 you know discussing uh, uh, some of the things that uh, how you might have been looking at it and how you might have been trading it uh, uh, the question came up of like well would he be getting out um, and then look at it and it's like just just like that example and, and we'd say like uh, yeah I think he would be getting out but he would be looking for if it went higher again he would be getting right back in right right well that's the point right there's no right. reason there's no reason you can't get back in and, and I'm very bad at this I, I I will admit, I mean, I have many weaknesses like a lot of traders, right? When I'm so mad that it did this, it's like it's very hard for me to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to try it again, right? I mean, it's just against my nature a lot of times. And you have to condition yourself to say, okay, I got out here. You know, it's very hard. It just, it just common, the common trader, it's very hard to sell here and then rebuy here. You just cost yourself 10 ticks, right? You're like, and then you're afraid this stuff's going to happen again. But there's nothing wrong if you see these huge buy bubbles come in again to just you know get in again risk five to ten ticks and give it a shot up to 70 you can do that I don't usually trade that way because I, most of the time I'm pissed off that I didn't make what I wanted to make and again that's a weakness of mine right so I hope this is resonating with traders that you know just because I was a million dollar trader at one point it doesn't mean I don't have the same feelings and make the same stupid mistakes that you know the trader that's been trading for six months does right so the point is you can get better at it and the real point is you can get way better at it knowing where this real volume is occurring instead of just trading up bar charts um so so this is this is perfect this happened today right I, and this is probably one of the reasons i lost all my screenshots because i was trying to get this in to show so this almost looks like a carbon copy carbon copy from yesterday right so here's the here's the big here's the tweet I'm assuming it was the tweet. I wasn't on the news because I was getting ready for this webinar, but I'm assuming this was a tweet about China. And then again, here's the ridiculous huge volume coming in. Boom. Comes back to BWAP. Again, this is a perfect example where, okay, I'm going to buy BWAP just like I did yesterday. Why? And then let's take a look what happened. If you're watching the market today, you know what happened, but 
Oh, look at that, right through it. So there you go, there's your 50%. One time I'm right, one time I'm wrong. That's not good enough for me, right? I want to know why was I wrong this time? What? Why is this different? This looks exactly like yesterday's trade, right? I'm sure every trader is talking to themselves right now saying exactly. I ask myself the same thing, right? Because that, that's what I want to know, right? And that's this is what book map shows you, right? So real-time volume, look at the difference, right? So this came down to VWAP. So VWAP was at... Uh, Sorry, again, I didn't study this as much. So VWAP is at 59.73, right? So um, here we go. So this rips through here, rips through here. It looks like the buying. So again, you could have, for this first blip, you could have been like, okay, yeah, it's the same thing as yesterday. I'm long right here. I want it. This is a different look here. I want to see the market buying above where the, where the, see this liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. I want to see the buyers get above that and then I'm in. So I'd buy right around here and then I'd risk down to here hoping it doesn't come back. But so look at the difference in the chart where huge sellers, little buyers never gets above this liquidity where the first initial heavy selling came in and then it just rips, right? So that's what I mean. If you are using book map, you don't have to be a 50% trader. You don't have to be saying, oh, this view app looks just like yesterday, right? I mean, look at the difference in the in the volume, right? So it's like you had it here, you had it here, but then again, you had a big level and the selling dried up. You show me where on here the selling dries up. The selling, it just crushes, right? So it's huge, still selling, selling big, big, bigger, 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 bigger right? So it's like, this can keep you out of this trade. So even if you did buy here, which again, I wouldn't buy right here. I would wait till it cleared. But again, you probably wouldn't be taking this long. And I was watching this real time and I did not take this long because I was like, this is not, this does not look like yesterday. It looks like yesterday on a bar chart. It doesn't look like yesterday in real time trading. And that's what makes the difference. And that's what is important. So again, this thing free falls and I don't even know what it's doing now, but um, the point is you would have stayed out of this trade and for good reason, right? I mean, just look at rip through this, rips of liquidity, rips of liquidity, holds right there, rips of liquidity, starts to rip through liquidity. I'm sure it probably went down a little more and then who knows, probably ranging. But the point is you avoided that trade. So you don't have to be 50-50 if you're using Bookman for volume. And that's what it looks like in the bar chart. Um, so this is... Okay, so this is another example. So this is uh, E-mini S&P yesterday. I, I did lose on this trade, right? So again, this was the same crude example and I had made money on the crude. So now I was waiting for this and I was like, I can't wait for the E-mini because it's going to do the same exact thing. Lo and behold, it did not, right? So again, just because you're using book map or any, anything doesn't mean you're going to be 100% right. But looking at it again, looking back at it, there's some different decisions I could have made. Um, that you learn from, right? So that, that's the whole point. And that's another thing with the replay where how I remember I said how I, you know, I have just thousands and thousands of minutes of experience of watching these markets. With Bookmap, you can go back and replay the day in five minutes and you can see exactly what went through. So instead of sitting there for six hours, you can do it in five minutes. And that that is that is like just reinforcing these patterns, right? Because that's all it is. You want to learn the volume patterns, right? So I'm going to show you a replay at the end here, which I think you guys will enjoy. But so anyway, the difference between this one, so this was VWAP was, make sure I get this right. Um, yeah, VWAP was right around 60 where I bought. Um, okay, yeah, so, so it came here and I saw this. And I bought right here, right? And then I, I stopped out. I put, just put it right below here. So it wasn't a big deal. I bought like, I think it was like 62 and I and I lost, I, I used it, I usually use a three point stop trying to make, you know, again, at least, at least 10 to 12 points is my goal. But anyway, what was different here is this came down and the, the sellers engaged and it took out that liquidity, right? So. This liquidity that was here for a while, that's how you know it was real, and then you see the sellers. The thing was, it came back down here, and there was nothing here to really support it. You had, you had some buying, but 
and then the selling dried up, right? So I showed you the other example in crew where the selling dried up. Yeah, but the selling dried up in a liquidity. This is below where liquidity was, and there's nothing here. I wish I would have put this higher so you can see below here. There was nothing below here. So yeah, the selling is drying up right now, and then the buyers win for a second, and then it just just falls apart, right? For five to six, I can't remember, I'll show you. But anyway, the point is, the difference between this selling drying up is one is below this liquidity, and there's no liquidity here to lean on, right? So on this example, um, this one here, the selling dries up, right? This is the same trade, the VWAP trade in crude I just showed. But look at this. Look at the difference, right? That's the difference. So, yeah, the selling dries up, but you want to be able to lean on something, you know, if to, to, to help. You want these bigger traders to help you, and you want bigger traders to be interested in that area. Because if big traders aren't interested in that area, then why are you interested in that area? That that's my philosophy, right? You want the big money behind you. You don't want to be just using subjective areas on the chart and hope you're right, because you're you're not going to be most of the time. Um, so that was that. I got stopped out on that one. Um, again, looking back at it, I could have been better. You know, again, hindsight. Yeah, it looked like. I mean, I bought here, and then it almost looked like it buy here. But when you really look at it, when you drill down, there was no support here at all, and it was below. This was happening below this area where they originally took it out. So. I should not have bought there, and I did, and I lost. But I only lost, you know, one unit. Um, so again, so now this is, you know, and I always want to take advantage of these high relative volume areas. This was seven times normal volume ripping through the market, right? So that's why I got long at VWAP the first time. Now you're now I'm saying to myself, you know, I usually would say, oh, I'm not going to get long again until it trades down to daily value area, low, which again is a DBA, two standard deviations from VWAP. But the point is, if it retraces its entire seven times volume bar, you don't want to be long whatsoever. Uh, and I think that was happening today in the mini right before I came on. You don't want to be long that. You want to see an area where this this heavy volume that these guys got run over are, are, getting, are re-engaging to get out of their trades or new longs coming in. So you never want to see this retrace this whole thing. And again, I can go, um, you know, I just, because of the, because of the reaction to these webinars and uh, the response, I, you know, I just started that, uh, the mentoring and I have scottpulsinitrader.com. I work with my, uh, my good friend, Nick Brunelli, but we're offering the mentorship. So we can go over all this in mentorship. If you guys are interested, just go to the website, you can see the stuff. But the point is, the what I point out to my students is you want to try to find an area to get back in, even if you were stopped here. Let's see if you can find one more area. Again, you don't want to be buying if it comes all the way down here because now these guys are in big trouble. But if as long as it's staying within this bar over here, find another area, right? So that's exactly what I did because I was convinced it was going to, because you know how e many always rebounds, right? So um, so this is a good example, right? So yes, there was nothing on the chart per se for what I look at as far as VWAP or even like a, you know, even a balance area, high or low, but you can see liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. They win, sellers win, buyers actually step up. There's no selling here, comes back. They try to re-engage again, buyers come back in. And what's different here is yes, it's below this liquidity, but what didn't I see on that last VWAP trade I lost on? There was no, here's liquidity below this. So now you're getting, the sellers are not winning, here's some buying, you've got liquidity here, it's right around this liquidity that they just can't push it through here, right? And again, I'm using the context of that bar. I want to try to be long one more time, right? So I bought here, and I actually I think I bought right here. I saw this, I bought right here, and I 52, and I risked down to just below. I think I had my stop at 49, and of course, a little more than three points. But again, if it came back down, just like the VWAP trade that I lost on, then I'm then I'm wrong. I use one, I lose one unit, but I was not wrong on this one, and the thing just rips, right? And it just kept ripping the rest of the day. So that's an example of the more you see this, these, these patterns, you're going to learn. And then when you couple that with the areas or chart lines or chart areas that make sense to you, and then you add in this real-time volume and see what's really going on, you're going to be on unbeatable, right? So that's, or you're going to be on a level playing field at least with these algorithms, right? So that's the difference between this and the VWAP trade I lost. Yes, it was kind of a in the middle of nowhere as far as what I look at, but it really wasn't because I saw this resting liquidity that's been in there all morning now they're failing at it, right? So that that's what I, that's how I trade. Does yeah, that make yeah. Sense? oh yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you're 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 um, alluding to a point in 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 essence uh, 
uh, that um, uh, is really nice is that all of these kinds of traditional um, uh, you know technical analysis or I mean even even if it's uh, auction market theory and, and market profile or, or auction profile uh, um, um, volume profile um, the uh, all of these patterns exist because of the order flow um, right you know exactly. they're they're made up because of the order flow if you see like a double bottom pattern and you don't see and like just like Scott went over and you don't see the things in here that make it look like the buyers are coming back in on the second leg and retest back down now you have something uh, where whereas like a, or you have something as well like if if they're showing more sellers on that next retest I mean now you know though like that's going to fail that 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 double bottom is going to fail it's going to go through it or at least much higher probability that is going to fail so right anyway you're exactly right um, so this was this is another chance to get long um, and this is the same move right so this is where I lost on my VWAP trade this is where I made money on this trade right and I'm still in it when I had this happen because um, my stop was down here and I, went, I, I, I knew by the end of the day I was going to it was going to rip just because that's what the e mini s p does for the last two years but so you see here and actually i had examples on um you know what this looked like but i lost all my charts so i just wanted to bring up the most relevant ones so again if you're waiting for an area to get to get long again um this this was and i might be able to let me see here i just want to show well hold on one second I literally named it e mini s and noise. I'll bring it up here for a second. Um, okay, yeah, so this was the move back. And you can see there was nothing really, where are you going to get along? So VWAP was like, I'll tell you exactly where VWAP was. So this is going to mess me up because now it's at the bottom of my chart. but. Um, Yeah, so VWAP was right around 60. So it comes up and then it comes back down. Are, are you going to buy at VWAPs? And then it gets below and it's just, so it's like the, now it's confusing again, right? It's confusing if you're looking at a bar chart. You're like, well, wait a second. This can't hold the, it gets back above. Oh, I think it's going to go. No, back below, right? And now you're getting stopped out playing a line in the chart, right? Instead of the line, a meaningful line, but you need to see volume that's confirming, right? And when you look at this, there is nothing here as it bounces. This is with the temp through VWAP comes back down through. W what are you leaning on here? There's nothing, right? That now, now, and this is the other thing too. When you start to see the chart light up like a Christmas tree, that's when the algos are in full force, right? So again, look at the time of day. This is the they know to flick on the flick on the switch. Let's play some games, right? So all these guys that are buying around VWAP think it's going to go. It's going to retest and go. You're getting just hammered here. I'm sure there's some traders listening that tried to be by VWAP yesterday. And, got whipsawed like this right so when do you get back in right that that's the whole point of this is again I would need to see it either rip through VWAP or what happened which happened let's see here right here so again look at this move and look at the relative volume right over two look, look at the difference when you're getting your you're getting your head ripped off on a whipsaw look at the volume it's nothing zero and that's why it does this as soon as the relative volume increases, boom, through, through VWAP, doesn't mean you chase. I'm going to show you this in the chart. It means you wait for a legitimate area to get in. Now you can take a look at VWAP as long as the volume agrees because, one, you know you can lean on this bar. Now it comes into it. Again, if it goes below this bar, hell no. Now you're looking for shorts, but it's going to hold. So you have this bar as a reference, high volume, guys got run over. Now you have VWAP that's going to mean something, right? Because these guys want, the guys that got run over and did not get out, when this comes anywhere back in this area, they are praying and they are getting out. Again, take it from me because this is exactly what I used to do when I would get stuck with 3,000 contracts, holding my breath, please got to come back so I can just scratch this trade. And that's exactly what this is. And then when you can add the confluence of VWAP and then the most important, the order flow, that's when you get your trade. Um, okay, so this is a different look. Okay, so this was, yeah, so this is when it ripped up. So this is what I want to show you. So this is a different look where it, it doesn't look like the standard just because it ripped up so quickly. But 
if you're looking for a place to get long, you have the VWAP, what else can I be using, right? Because you had, here's liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. All these algos got run over as well. What could I use? I mean, if you when you scrunch this in, and again, this is what it looked like because of this move here. It's, look at the size of this buy bubble versus anything else, right? So if you're just trying to find a reason to get long VWAP, one, it's VWAP. Two, you know there was high relative volume. Now you add in the real volume. Okay, yeah, technically it could be any anywhere in this area, but let's let's give it a shot. This was a big buy. Guys really got run over here. Resting order offers got run over. Let's give it a shot. Comes back down. This is VWAP. Again, the minute you see the buying, you're in. Your risk just below here. Then you see the liquidity come in too. So now you're you got a double whammy, right? You got this. You got VWAP. You got buyers engaging. You you buy at 60. Your risk down to 58, right? You can even you can keep it closer than that, but whatever. Even if you put it down here, and I think we all know what happened because it happens every day. It rallies to the you know rally to the high. Um, yeah. So I mean, look at that. So you could have bought 60. And that's a 12 point trade, right? And then. Again, I'm sure there was something here. I got out a little earlier here because I had to leave, but I'm sure there was volume here that gave you the signal that, hey, this might not be working, and then, you know, it bounces around. But again, this this is what you look for. It's not just VWAP. It's not just this. It's everything combined, and then you have a reason on Bookmap. Again, this isn't a normal a normal thing you're going to see all the time, but this is a way to play these these tweets and these ridiculous moves. Is find things like this, right? Find areas that you see blows through liquidity, comes back. You know, you could have, if you're aggressive, you could have tried to buy here, right? But it was really nothing on the chart. And who cares if you did and you lost, big deal. You lost one unit. Wait one more time. Try it again. Now you make, you know, four times your money. You make four four X. So that's what I'm talking about, you know, trying to trade this real-time markets, especially with these tweets. This was a perfect example. Again, this is from yesterday. It's not like I'm cherry-picking things from four months ago. Um, so this is a lot of familiar, a lot of traders are familiar with NYSE tick. So this is a great trade. Um, and I have more example, I'll have more examples of, of these on my website. Um, cause you know, we're going to be also offering, um, actual setups on there as well as, um, Bruce, I believe the book map marketplace is coming out as well, where people can purchase setups. Um, but there's a lot, I have a lot more examples of this, but this is just an example of a, everyone knows of a tick divergence or most people do, right? So the, this is NYSE. I see tick. You see the low was 97. You see it come back. Um, so the market made a lower low, but tick did not, right? So that alone could be a buy signal, right? But again, you're not going to be, you're probably going to be a 50% trader. What could you have that's going to help you on tick divergences? Guess what I'm going to say? Book map, right? So this was the move. This was the divergence. Look, look at the liquidity that was in the book. And even got, as it came came down to it, even got thicker. So now you're talking, you have, again, it's confluence. You have a tick divergence right there. This is this. This is the first move down. It made The market made a lower low. Tick did not. That's your signal. Okay, I want to I be long. And this is where you can get long. So the minute you see it into this and you see the buyers come in, you buy right here, you risk right here. Like, look at this trade. I mean, it's a seven-plus point trade. You're risking, you could have bought right here, you're risking a point, point and a half. Just put your stop just below this. Again, there could be times that it turns around and rips through here. But again, when you're making three, four, or five times your money when you're right, it doesn't matter. You can be wrong all the time. I already showed you two trades today I was wrong on, you know, but I still was profitable yesterday. So this was actually not from yesterday, but the point is, you know, you can see. A, a question. See, Question on yeah. that one, uh, Scott. So, I mean, because uh, I've, you know, I don't have access to tick um, or ticky or whatever, uh, it, but I've always thought this was a good strategy. Um, uh, it just exactly what you're showing right here. The question is on on um, how are you managing that? Because if you see that um, some, you know, some sort of divergence or that extreme on the tick. Um, uh, are you, and then you see this in book map like this, I mean, you, you don't have to wait for the buyers necessarily. You can get even a better price. Right, absolutely, right, especially for this type of trade. And again, you're aggressive, but you just don't want to be risking three three plus points, right? So right. you're aggressive here where you say, okay, I'll be aggressive, but if it blows through here, I'm out. I'm risking a point right. type of thing, right? Because so, if this is right, it's going to be really right. If it's wrong, then I'm, I'm going to lose one point, big deal, right? Um, and then the other thing, and this is the thing I just learned about. Again, this is why I love Bookmap. It has so many things to offer. And my partner, Nick Bernelli, is an expert at this. Um, 
this shows you at the prices. So this is actually when the market was up here, not down here. But it shows you the pulling um, and the adding of the orders in the book. So it's like when this. So he actually has a class he's putting up in the next uh, few days where it kind of shows this um, where it, you know as you see the selling comes in, are they yanking? Are they yanking? I mean, yeah, you can see it in the colors, but are you real time? So look at this. This is sold off. They they were yanking their orders. They sold they yanked five, they yanked five, they yanked two, they yanked forty five. So again, I, I don't use this yet just because I'm so new to it. My my again, my partner Nick's an expert. This is all he uses, or one of the main things he uses when making his decisions in in the charts. But this is just another example of just the amazing things that Bookmap has, the information that you get that ninety nine percent of traders do not have, retail traders do not have, right? And this is the information that the funds big funds do have. So it's like, do you, this is helps you compete. So again, I don't want to get into this. Don't start asking me questions. Nick will be available for you. You know, again, scottpulsinitrader.com, you can go there and he can help you with this stuff. But I just wanted to show you another, I mean, I have it on my chart again, just because I want to learn it, but I just find this stuff so fascinating, you know, as, as far as what I used to do. Um, so, oh yeah, so this this is the bar chart of what happened. So this this was that exact low. And look at that. I mean, you never, never even came back. And this was, I mean, if you're able to hold it, Using the book map volume, I'm sure you could have caught a lot of this, right? Even if you're trying to hold the VWAP. Um, next one is, all right, so this is stocks. I think they're all stocks from here on out. Yeah. Okay, so again, like I was saying before, you want to have other options when these markets suck, right? So again, yeah, e many is great now, crude is great, but what about the last three months when it's just ranges in four point range where guys that are trying to trade for a living, they, there's nothing to do. So then you end up forcing trades because you have to make money, you got to pay rent in three days. I mean, people may be laughing, but trust me, that's exactly what happens. And and that's when you make poor decisions because you just don't have any other options. You've got to, you've got to put on a trade at, at, at a, you know, area that might work because that you don't even have conviction in because you have to try to make some money, right? The point is, that's fine, but try to make some money in other instruments that actually have, are moving around and have, you know, that are that are in play that day instead of just banging your head on the S&P, um, which I even, I basically hate S&P even when it trades, but nowadays, but whatever, uh, I still do trade it. So the point is, Start looking at stocks, start looking at stocks in play. Again, if you want to learn like full depth about stocks, I highly recommend SMB. You know, let them know that I recommended you if you decide to get their education. But even if you don't want to do the education, even even if you want to use your basic chart knowledge combined with book map, you can absolutely do that. The only thing that I advise is you, you're trading stocks that are in play. And again, I get this from SMB. This is where I learned this stuff from. Basically, anything I talk about stocks, except the thing is SMB doesn't use book maps. So, but the other stuff that I use, I have learned from SMB. But they talk about stocks that are in play, meaning earnings, meaning news. Um, you know, the CEO is resigning. Um, you know, biotech just came out with a phase two result, things like that, right? You don't want to be trading these these stocks because it's just like trading the S&P. Stocks are dead. That's the algorithms. That's their, their, that's their heyday. That's that's what they want. They want retail traders trading these stocks when they're dead because that's when they turn on the machine and just whipsaw you to your count is zero. So the point is, if you can get in these stocks when they're in play, and a lot, again, this stuff tells you they're in play too. There's relative volume for Lulu. I mean, yesterday when they came out with earnings, um, if you can get in these stocks that are in play, these algorithms shut off because they can't afford, they, they, this is when the funds start playing in these stocks, these algorithms can't compete with the funds, the funds will run them over, they'll blow out every everything that, they, that they've that they made in the last month in one day, so that's why they turn them off. Um, so this was, any any questions on that, Bruce, by the way? Sorry, I'm talking a little fast now. Um, questions on, on, uh, on, on what again? On, on the stocks yet, and anything about that, or? Uh, not really, nothing on the stocks yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is such a great point. I mean, it's like go where the money is, um, and go right. where what's where, what's moving uh, instead of banging your head against the wall. Right, You're exactly right. And take please take it from me. Um, so this was a trade I took as well um, in Lululemon yesterday, where 
you can see this heavy selling at the open. Again, this was seven, eight, nine times that got it cut off here. But so this is again, if you don't know what this is, so this is this is the default setting on thicker swim for relative volume. They, these bars turn yellow once it goes over two times normal volume. So so I can immediately just look at glance at a chart and know if there's big time players in, in that stock or future, right? So this is all this is telling you. So when you see it light blue or purple, whatever color this is, again, I'm colorblind, so I can't tell, or you see nothing, there's there's nothing going on. But this is important. And again, you're not just putting on trades when you see relative volume, right? You can put on trades when there's nothing going on if it corresponds with an area where there was a lot of relative volume, right? So <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, trades is in stocks is when it like gaps down and then makes it back above VWAP and then holds VWAP, right? So you can see here it's holding VWAP. Um, this is the two-minute chart. This is the five-minute chart. Uh, Thirty minutes this is important except to see the gap down. But um, so you can see, so I, you got to be careful as well though because again my same hypothesis that I use in those other those futures trades where you see these big bars moving down and you see this heavy volume. There were buyers there, obviously, right? Or the sellers couldn't have sold. So buyers got their heads ripped off. The sellers were the, the initiators. So there's a lot of guys that are underwater here. So, you, you know, again, I, I go over all this stuff in my mentoring. But you've got to be careful with this type of trade when you see this heavy a volume, right, when it gets above VWAP. But anyway, so if you're just looking at a chart, yeah, you can be that by VWAP. And again, you're probably going to be 50% right of, of the time. Why, why is this a legitimate trade when you go to... The actual volume. So this this was the move up. Um, um, yeah. So this was the move up above VWAP, and as it come, so I don't just buy it as it breaks through VWAP. I wait till it comes back to VWAP, and I I want to see how it reacts at VWAP. So this was that, and I'll show you here in a second. That was the move up, and then it started this, this little tail, and then it started to come back, which is this. Right. So this is the tail. And starts now it starts to come back. So now I'm interested in VWAP only when I start to see big orders come in at VWAP. Again, why do I want to buy a line VWAP in this case? Why do I want to buy there if no one else is participating there, right? So I not only do I want to see the rest of the liquidity, now now my ears are pricked. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a great area. Potentially, I'm going to want to put a trade on here because I have the confluence of VWAP. Now I see the, the liquidity come in, the huge, you can see it right here in the book. 20,000 shares, 21,000 shares. You can pretty much, rest, pretty much rest assured this is real volume because it's been in there. As it started to come down, they put it in, right? And then they left it in. That is a very good sign. You want to see this if you're leaning on areas. You don't want to see put it pull, put it in pull because when it comes down there, now all of a sudden there's an air pocket and it goes right through, right? So in my mind, this is legitimate, um, legitimate order. So I actually jumped the gun here and I bought a little early. It didn't matter because I had my stop under here, but I could have got better pricing. Um, I mean, I did on half of it, but I bought half of a position. I, I just was so giddy when I saw this. I got in again. I'm just like a lot of most traders that I make the same idiot mistakes instead of being patient, right? So, um, <clears throat> so you can see it came down here. This is when I started to get a little nervous, where I saw this humongous. So you can see what's so great about Bookmap too is it makes everything relative, right? So the minute this is what these these bubbles look like before that right? Now look what these bubbles turned into the minute this huge sell came in. They all turn into like these little tiny bubbles because it's all relative to what just happened here. So now I'm like, hmm, this might not be good, but I'm like, you know, you still, they still have to break through this 20,000 contracts. So this is obviously the 20,000. It obviously stayed in. They, someone obviously sold 20,000 contracts. That's fine. Do you have another 20,000 you want to sell? If not, I'm, I'm going to win this trade, right? So you can see it come down, test it, Bounces off, test it again, test it again. The thing is, look at the selling difference. One, two, this is getting heavier. They're putting in more orders as it's selling into it. That is a great sign the minute you see the buying. So I actually added when I saw that, again, because I had a much better price too. So I added right in here. Now I'm risking 30 cents. You know, my stop was right, right around here. Because again, if they blow through it like they did here, then I'm wrong. You're going to be wrong but because you can't predict the future. But the point is, the odds are so stacked in your favor here to not only be right, you're risking 30 cents to possibly catch it up to this liquidity level, right? And that was my goal. That was my first goal is here to see how it reacted. Um, <clears throat> any questions on that so far? Uh, just, just uh, let's see. Um, yeah, a few questions here. Okay. Uh, 
uh, wh why would some big seller at the 20 uh, or 220, level, um, why would some big sellers see at, why would you see them at, I guess that, I don't really understand the question there, Matt, um, or this, you ask it again here. Uh, well, the, yeah, I mean, uh, Matt, they will be looking at maybe their order um, book or their dome or their level two, but see how like, you know, looking at book map here, uh, well, I'll let Scott uh, answer, but there's so many di nuances to look at here in, in book map. Uh, in 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 the heat map, the his, not only the current book but the historical book. Uh, so so I don't know if you wanted to explain and go through that again, uh, uh, Scott. Like uh, what what you saw in the relationship of the volume and the liquidity uh, at that level. Um, that's, like, that's, what... that's the question. Is like a, so. Um, uh, I think I just answered that though. Didn't you, I? I mean, I saw... Yeah, you, you did. I mean, they took out this liquidity here, but now I'm late. now they have to take out this liquidity as well for me to be wrong, right? And there's right. even some more right here. So, granted, I, I'm not leaning on this. I'm not. If this, they're going to get through this like they did here. I'm out right here, right? So, again, this this is what really transacted, and it was real, and they kept it in and they hammered it. And again, once they sold this, it made all these other bubbles so small. That shows you how much selling really occurred. I, I'm not going to lie. I was nervous right here. I'm like, hmm. Well, if they took that out, they can easily take this out. When I felt better was one bounce came back again, came back again into it, and then this is one of my favorite setups is when they add liquidity, they're like, bring it, I got some more for you, right? That's how you, this is how you gotta think about markets. Once it makes it more fun, it makes it more realistic of what's really happening, right? So it was like, okay, here, here's some more, you wanna sell some, sold a bunch here? Here's 20,000, I'm gonna add some more in too, right? And that, that's why it got more red. And once I saw, again, this could've just ripped through, but it didn't. The minute I saw the buying come in, I got long more. I was already long here from a, a bad price because I got giddy as it came down here because I saw both of these, but I also knew I, I didn't lose on it. I just I just had a worse price because I knew it had to break through both of these high liquidities for me to be wrong. So again, I got long here and now I'm targeting here. Look, there's nothing in the book. I mean, this is little, this is tiny. If I'm right and these guys now, again, you're the guy, uh, whoever you said it was, Matt, Matt, pretend this is you. You just sold 20,000 contracts and now you see it come down here and there's another, you got to remember too, guys trading stocks, they're using level two. A lot of times all these prices are not on the level two, right? They're, you have penny increments. So no one even sees this. There's another 20,000 here on the level two till it gets down to this price. This is another huge advantage. You can see all, this certainly isn't this 23. That's not showing on level two until it gets up here. That, that's an advantage that you have that these guys trading off level two do not until it gets down there. So pretend you're this 20,000 lot trader here that you sold, you hammered it, you're like, yeah, I got him. Comes back down, now you see another 20,000. You're like, oh shit, now what am I gonna do, right? Now it starts to rip in your face. Now what are you gonna do? If you're this trader, are you gonna just say, well, I hope it comes back? No, you're gonna peel out of it. That's the whole idea. Now you have fuel to help on top of the buyers that get in, the VWAP players. Again, you have confluence. There's multiple things you can add to a trade. More variables you add to a trade, the better you're going to be as far as you know, as far as being right percentage-wise. And variables, I mean variables like real-time volume, not adding a bunch of lines to your chart that you confuse yourself, right? So I had the variables of VWAP. I had the variables of the resting orders. I had the variables of the seller, big seller, no seller. All right, you add all those together, you have a great risk-reward trade. I'm risking 30 cents on this trade, and I doubled up. I, I bought here on, on the way down. I think I bought um, right here, actually. I thought I was right on top of it. I bought right here because I saw this. So I was risking 60 cents on this trade, and then I added for 30 cents, risking 30 cents, right? Because I knew if I was right on it, it's going to minimum here. Again, and this is another thing Bruce teaches. If you if you listen to his, he does his daily webinars real time um, that are more than helpful, that the the markets usually tend to trade to the liquidity, right? And it makes sense. If you're a big big fund, you're not going to chase. You're going to blow the book out. You'll, you'll be chasing prices for $5. You want to try to push gently into your orders and make people sell into your resting orders, and then you're ready to go, right? So it's like the market, ten, as you can see here, the market moved to liquidity. The market market's going to move to this liquidity is my goal in my thinking if I'm right on this trade. So hopefully that clarified that. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, just a couple of other nuances um, uh, in in that in that chart um, uh, for for Matt is um, look the first level traded like like you said you know no no question uh, the next level they're not trading into it on t twice and the third time they trade into it 
they look at the volume that traded into it, like compared to what was there before uh, at right. the higher level. Tiny. It's tiny, tiny. and is completely, completely absorbed. It does not trade through that liquidity. It's absorbed and they added. And they added. And you look at that. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a really, it's a nice, it's a beautiful setup. Uh, so uh, it, anyway, um, yeah, I think we flog that one to death. Right. So, and I'm going to show you like, you know, I'm also not perfect in my, my exits, right? So here we go. This is where I um, bought earlier. Yeah, this is it here. So anyway, so as it came up here, yeah, because this is where the liquidity put in is 221.30. So then this was my first, this is my first target, right? So again, just because it gets here doesn't mean you're going to get out. You want to see a reason in the volume because a lot of times it'll just, you'll see the huge blue bubble right through, right through, right through right? You don't want to get out. You don't get out just because you made five times your money or four times your money or whatever. Make the volume show you, just like you get in, make the volume show you a reason to get in. This is a reason to get out, in my opinion, right? So I got out of half right here because I saw this, and then I started to see this. I'm like, uh, and this also kind of refreshed, the same reason why I got in here. So again, I'm not mad at myself that I got out of, got out at, the, some of, at this point because it gave me a reason. I would have been mad at myself if this move was in the darkness and I got out, I'd be very mad at myself. And that's what I tried to condition myself not to do because so many traders do that because they're so giddy. They caught a winning trade. They just want, they're looking at their P&L and they want to book a profit and, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I can pay my rent this month. And they're just getting out for no reason, right? That's it, that's going to kill you as a trader too because you do it enough, you're going to cost yourself tens of thousands of dollars. So my point is this, I had a reason to get out of some here because it, they tried to buy it through, rejected, I sold some here. Okay, nothing wrong with that. I still had a little bit. It came back here again. Now they here's the bigger buyers. Look at the difference. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, for the remaining half I have, I'm golden. Okay, well and behold, they put in more, they put in more um, liquidity. So I got out of some more. So when I show you here, I got out of some more just because there's a reason. I'm not just I'm not just panicking out because I'm I'm, I'm afraid or I want to make money. I had a reason to get out. Okay. Sometimes you're gonna it's gonna turn around and keep going, but you can't be mad at yourself. That's trading, and, and you followed your rules. That's the point. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. this is, yeah. This, so this is when I got out. So you can see they bought huge, bought huge, and then I see this. I'm like, oh damn it. Um, Oh, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. Take that back. This was actually, I was not even into this in at this point. Um, this was what I was talking about here, right here. And then they had this. I ended up getting out. Of, uh, I think I actually had a quarter left here. I got out a quarter here because at this point, I'm like, you know, I come back and stop me out with a quarter. I'm going to see if this thing could get through here because the buyers were engaging. Right. So I didn't want to just puke it all out. I puked out three quarters of it. I still was mad, you know, especially when it did that. But whatever, I had a little piece left and then it came back. And I saw this again, and once again, it's the same thing. Huge buyers, they put in more liquidity. I sold the, the last quarter I had when it started to sell off, and I'm thinking, here we go again. Now it's probably gonna go to 25. And then actually that was that was it, right? So it, it, did, it did get back above there, so I'm stewing again, right? But again, you gotta be okay. You gotta be okay with why I had a reason to get out. I mean, I, I made a very nice profit on this trade, and I had a reason to get out. Yeah, of course, human nature, you're going to be mad when it starts to do this. But guess what? You know, I saw this big selling. That's where I got out. And then it comes up here. It didn't even get to this liquidity. So even if I would have held half and through all of this, it just even if I was psychic, because that's what you have to be to hold through this, you know, or or just be have a conviction that it's absolutely going here. Otherwise, you're going to be getting out of something here because you can't you can't follow your rules one time and then ignore them the next time. Right. So. That's why you can't be mad at yourself. But the point is, even if I did hold all this, as it came back down through this whole area, I would have been out right here anyway, right? So it, it, that's the point. It's like you can't, you got to move on too. It's like I have a very bad habit of sitting there and, and, and thinking about what could have been instead of just saying, okay, big deal. Because the thing is, so I wasted all this energy being pissed off. I didn't hold it to another 60 cents. Then I actually would, if I would have been in the whole thing, I would have been out right here anyway the same price because it fell through where this tried to get through earlier and it did and that failed i would have been out at the same price the point is get out you said you followed your rules you made a profit move on to the next trade right so hopefully right. i'm making sense here as oh, far as also I, I, like absolutely. i'm not some trader right it's like and, and the volume's not always going to be perfect even though this is really nice you've got to fo just follow your rules and, and live with it 
and move on. That's what successful traders do, right? Poor traders are the ones that, that stew all day, that I should have had this, I could have done this. You followed your rules, follow the same rules for getting in and getting out, don't change them, and you will be a successful trader if you're employing bookmap. Uh, what no, are you saying? Great, great. I mean, great stuff. I mean, it, I mean that's such an important point, um, uh, you know, to hear from, uh, uh, you know, from you, uh, trading such size and, and with such experience, like it, the same kinds of things that we all feel, and and uh, but then and you still feel it, but you you move on and you deal with it, right? And just know, you know, again, now I look back at this a day later, this was just all wasted emotional energy that I put into this thing because I was mad I wasn't catching another sixty cents to a dollar. I mean, it's just silly. I had a reason to get out, move on again. You can get back in, right? I don't like this trade, but technically you could have got back in here when you see this big seller fail and then it goes back up. Yeah, you could have got in right here, and, but then again, you would you would have had a loser, right? So, you know, I like to take my trade, take my profit. It was, this was a very good trade. You know, it was it was three dollar trade, almost yeah, a little less than three dollars. But the point is, you've got to live with it. Have your rules, and you can turn the page and hop right on to the next trade. Because when you have stocks in your arsenal as well as futures, there's a trade right around the corner, probably within seconds. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this was um, okay. So that, yeah, this was the move back down, right? So, so I actually I ended up losing here again, and so I want to. So Bruce, what do you see here? I just want to get your opinion on this. Let's see if I have it again. I. So when this came back down here, I, I don't. Again, I had to reinsert all my charts at the last second today, so I don't have the book map. But there was resting liquidity there, so I got I got long right here as it came right here and then it blew through it you know and I got stopped out and then it looked like it was gonna go I didn't re-engage or anything but I did re-engage there was a ton of liquidity right here and I'll show you the after effect but what do you see here Bruce that you didn't see here when I got long the first time at VWAP um, well you don't see the big you know buying coming in well that well yeah but you didn't really see it here as well but I'm saying do you see anything in chart wise what looks different from this VWAP versus right here what is the market doing? Well, it, it went through it. It went through it, and it balanced below it. And I was blind to it because I was just convinced it was going back up. I was stewing that I didn't catch my full trade, right? Again, I'm just like every other trader. So I this was this was that area where it came into it. It came right here. So this is exactly how I got long the first time, right? But the problem was this now, this liquidity area, this was below the VWAP. That was the difference in my mind, right? You've got to come up with reasons why you could have been wrong. And in my mind, I was wrong here because the difference between this look, this was right at VWAP, this one balanced below VWAP. So now you're going to have all the guys, again, you got to think like other traders do, the guys that are caught, they're like, okay, wait, this isn't, this is not getting above VWAP. I, so you have more, uh, better chance of this being wrong because it's under here. Not that it can't move back up. The point is, in my mind, that's why I was wrong. Even though the the volume looked kind of like it did the first time I got long, the difference was this was now below VWAP, and I'm not even supposed to put this trade on. My trade is at VWAP. It's not below VWAP. Again, I make mistakes too. I was. This is why this this program sometimes can get you in trouble because it's so great. Like I ignored, then I started ignoring my basic rules, like being above VWAP, and I got in and I lost. But the point is, okay, so I lost here. Where can I where can I reengage? Right. So. As it came down here, I mean, I, I missed this one too because I I, would, I got stopped out. I'm like, screw it. But it came back down here. But if you you know if you were adamant about being long, look at the difference between this selling, this selling, and then what happened here. Look at that little red dot, right? And you got this. You can buy when you see blue, gone, and it went back to the highs of the day, right? So the point is, you know, this a lot of this is kind of an art. I don't like to use art in my trading, but the point is, if you want to get long, you know, say you do lose here. And you want another area to get long. And actually, this was relative high relative volume that came in that tried to push it down. So that could have been a reason, um, you know, where you went. Then you saw the volume again, like I just showed. Then you can get long. It was just something influence wise. The point is, I did not get long. But if you want to get long, book map again. If you're looking just at a chart, where are you getting long here? Why why are you getting long? Just because? Just because you you, you feel like you're lucky? When you look at book map. There's another reason, there's a reason to get long, 
right here, right here, right? Again, I don't take, I haven't, I didn't take this trade, but I'm just showing you that, you know, if you're looking for more reasons to get in, there it is, right? So then again, this went, this went even higher than it did the first time. So you can imagine how pissed I was the rest of the day, but whatever. Um, right, right. Oh, no, so, so. It, and, but it, it does it does fit into I mean even the, the candlestick charts and, and your 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 uh, your strategies um, I mean it, it's still it's still all there uh, although it went down below it and you and then you see the liquidity there uh, you see the relative volume start to come in on the buy side and not only will it come back up and it traded up through uh, right. the the, uh, the VWAP now look for maybe a pullback to it again right exactly and that's what I should do that's what my rules are and I broke my rules so. Again, you got to have rules. You got to stick with them. You got to do the same thing every time. So I just wanted to end, end the webinar here. I want to show. I don't even know, especially people that don't have Bookmap, how incredible this program is, and how much education you can get from just replaying. This is at full speed, 128. This is what we were just looking at, Lulu. So I want you to watch this. And you tell me if you watch this enough, and you watch these replay these every day, four or five stocks every day, the futures every day. You replay it in this manner you're going to start seeing a lot more of the patterns of the volume patterns and exactly what what happens at these right so just this is for people that don't know this exists on this program this is probably the most one of the most credible things that they have again instead of sitting there like i did for four years watching every tick come through the market for you know seven hours a day eight hours a day you can speed it up and you can get the same education in, in minutes right for six you can condense six seven hours into five minutes so I just want to show this and I'll maybe point some stuff out but so I mean it's just really cool to see how this thing reacts at liquidity oh it blew through it blew through let's see if I can pull this up here right this is really such a powerful feature and and I know a lot of guys aren't using it um, uh, we had a we had a trader yesterday uh, uh, Jean Marc, I mean, uh, he, he used to it. see here, like, okay, here my pattern liquidity came in. And I saw some buying. I'm going to get in. Came again and tried again. They tried again. Got through that one. Let's see what happens at 220. Got through that one. Again, but you're seeing the actual transactions hit the market, and that's why it's pushing through, right? Right. That looks pretty good. Yeah. But you're going to see this is it looking good now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then look at liquidity come back in now. Right, and now this is kind of see it kind of bounces. I don't know if this is the VWAP trade. No, the VWAP trade that I took is a little a little later. But the point is, you you can speed up what's really happening in such a condensed time frame where you can really start to learn how these markets trade near liquidity, right? And it, you do this for futures, you do it for stocks. You're just, I mean, we're already at you know eight o'clock my time. That's nine o'clock central. It's like you're just you're you're just condensing everything and getting so much education by watching this order flow um it, it, yeah we we make this kind of analogy like uh it, it how how like uh you know the poker uh players uh all the young guys they they they've played you know years and decades of of hands because they can play video poker um uh and right. get get the experience uh that would take you know years by playing out actual hands right I mean, you just saw that bounce off liquidity three times, and then boom, that was when I, I got long. And then you get to see it, you know, how it traded real time into this liquidity above where I kind of panicked out. Right, so my first right. my you first target was 23. Right. <clears throat> but again, you're going to get moves, counter moves. Don't let it scare you out unless there's a, re like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's no reason to get out until you see something at liquidity, right? So, yeah, if you want to get in, Actually, I think this was the trade. I'm sorry. This was this was the view app trade that I took, and then this is where I start to panic. I panicked out a little bit here, and it got up there. But this is just great to watch, just to see how these markets work at liquidity and how certain stocks work at liquidity. You know, Lululemon might be might have its own tendencies, right? You'd say, hey, I'm going to be a Lululemon expert. Doesn't mean you trade it every day, right? But when there's news in it, then then you then you know how this thing trades, how it reacts to liquidity. Roku is, Roku is a, a similar one where I know they turn off. Look, I mean, look at all these algos that have been turned off, right? And and I know I know Lululemon respects liquidity. Roku respects liquidity. It's good to know that about certain stocks. Doesn't mean you trade them every day again, but when they're in the news, you trade them. Um, so I think this is where I I bought again, even though this is below VWAP. 
thinking I was good to go. It's just so incredible to go back and replay this. And, and then again, you can you can turn this on, you know, and, and th this is just this is just incredible. You know, I could put let's trade a let's trade a thousand lot. See if I can catch it for real this time, even though I know what happened. <laughs> and you, there is no excuse not to be a, a efficient trader, a profitable trader if you have this kind of information, real time information. You have this replayability where you can actually put on trades and see how you would have done, you know, you don't, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing to me. Like I've, I have not been this excited since I made 10 million bucks in 2003 for the next year. I have not been this excited. Wow. All right. So I'm in, let's see. I just bought a thousand. Hopefully it works out for me. <laughs> so again, this is where I got stopped out real time when I really traded and this was below VWAP. <clears throat> A little bit longer until until over, but I just it's just again now why are you getting out here if you're long? There's nothing here. And yeah, I mean this is relatively this is not heavy volume. I mean this is some volume you can see it reacting, but I mean we're, we're, I'm not getting out. I'm getting I'm trying for the heaviest level. Now that I know I'm right, let's see if we can get there. Right, you're ready to dump this. Okay, there's some heavy selling, but I still don't see that you know decent liquidity. See if we can get up there. So we're at two o'clock's market close at so fourteen for me. All right, so I mean, this is good to see too. Like, look, look at all the selling compared to the buying, right? It's like, how much more do I want to? I mean, they're just hammering. Look at the look at the buying. There's four buy bubbles. There's like twenty sell bubbles. Huge sell bubbles. See if they win. The point is, in real time, like if I was really trading, I would have been happy to get out right there. They're still hammering this. I don't know what it did today, but I wish I could bring it up. But that's uh, they were definitely hammering it into the close. Oh, that's a the close there, yeah. But you just saw that. You know, I just watched an entire day. I put on a, you know, a, a pre. I don't want to say pretend trade, but it's you know, I, I traded just like. I mean, you don't have to keep it at 128 times regular speed either, right? You can slow it down when it gets into your area, slow it down normal time, put on a trade, and practice. Like, I, there, there's nothing better out there. I, I mean, I, I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any trader that tells me there is because I, this is this is amazing. One, what it tells you real time. Two, how you can enhance your trading and practice and get better and, and be a proficient trader. <clears throat> That's all I got. Any, uh, I can answer some questions now. Okay. Um, I apologize for the beginning too. I, again, I messed up my charts and no, lost no, them all. no worries, no worries. I, I, I will, uh, I will edit this, uh, this, this video here. So uh, we'll get uh, just to the good stuff. Uh, Rhonda, um, uh, I put the links back into the chat. You should see it in the chat there if you want to reach out and and contact uh, Scott. Uh, you've got his website, his email, his his Twitter, and and then you can switch back offers. if you want, Bruce. You want to switch back quickly? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, so hold on a minute. I don't need to do anything, do I? No, okay. no, I, I, I'll grab it. Okay. So uh, yeah, here's his here's his uh, his contact information uh, as well as I put into the chat there for you. So uh, uh, you guys uh, you guys have it. Um, uh, there's yeah, some so questions the, so about the, web, so the website. Just quickly, the website's brand new. I literally built it with my uh, my partner Nick Brunelli um, just in the last couple of weeks, just because I've had so much um, I've had so much response to my webinars asking for mentoring and you know group coaching things like that. So the one-on-one -on -one is um, you know obviously more because we're working one-on-one, -on -one, but then I we, we've added in a group feature where we're taking five at a time, five traders at a time, where it, you know it's more affordable for the smaller trader. Um, and then we're going to also have individual setups you can purchase that I like that Nick like Nick is an expert in NASDAQ and uh, and cryptocurrencies um, as well as some of the, the really detailed stuff in book maps so he's a great resource as well uh, so he'll be on some of these webinars um, yeah so that I mean that again this was all in response to the response I got from, you know for mentoring and stuff so it's a 
it's exciting, you know, and again, I, I love to teach because the more I teach, the more I learn as well. Right. So, I, again, especially with BookMap, because I'm so new to it, I've only been using it five, six months, and, you know, and the more I do it, the more I see, oh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I shouldn't have taken this, or should have, should have seen this, so it, it's great. I love teaching as well, and, and I love fighting back against the machines. That's my favorite thing, because the machines blew me out the first time. I will do anything I can to help traders <laughs> compete. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, a good a good point there. Um, let's see, uh, there are um, uh, some questions here about uh, well, some re really a appreciation here for you, Scott. Um, that's uh, lots of nice comments here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, in terms of data provider, John is DX feed for stocks, and uh, and he's using Rhythmic for futures. Okay, uh, and uh, what was it the um, like about scanning for the stocks or biases for the day? Uh, uh, you know what? Um, uh, how how do you um, uh, deal with that? Yeah, so I like I said earlier. I mean, I I'm uh, SMB. I have a membership through them where they have stocks of the day, they have stocks in play every day, they do a morning meeting. Steve Spencer is probably the most informed, educated uh, guru in stocks I've ever seen. I mean, the guy is he's just unbelievable. But, you know, they have a thing. It's pricey, but you can get, you know, the stocks in play, and you can learn their setups, and you can learn how they trade stocks. Again, they don't use Bookmap, um, so I've kind of, obviously, I've taken what I've learned from them, and I've enhanced it <laughs> times 100 with Bookmap. And that's what all traders should do with anything that they're using. You know, it doesn't mean you leave what you're doing or, or, or ignore what makes sense to you. You just use Bookmap to make it better, right? So you're not a 50-50 trader. So now you go to a 70-80% trader, whatever it is. Um, but back to the original question, SMB, uh, I think it's smbtrading.com. Uh, you can you can go to them, and they're they're a great resource uh, to you know to learn stocks. But if you're just going to do it on your own, all you got to do is go to one of these you know stock websites that put up free real-time data right so you want to you want to be paying attention to stocks that were were uh, are in the news that day or they call it in play so earnings um you know ceos leaving things like that and just regular news um possible buyout uh you know biotechs they're introducing new drugs things like that you can find that's readily available on the, on the internet i mean you can just type in real-time stock news and, and find out you go to the other thing I recommend is Finviz, F-I-N-V-I-Z. You can type in the stock ticker, and then you can see on there what the relative volume is for the day. It gives you a ratio. Obviously, you want to be trading things over one, preferably over two, three, four. That just means that's just the relative volume. Like I was showing in the charts that I look at, it's just showing you the relative volume is one. You know, If it's a two, it means it's twice as much that day. It's 100% more that day. If it's 2.5, you know, then it means it's 250% more volume. You're going to see some some of these stocks. You're going to see, you know, 100 times more volume. But the point is, those are the stocks you want to participate in because when you see the huge volume like that, that means there's big funds in there participating, and that means these algorithms are for the most part turned off, which is what you want as a retail trader. You do not want to be competing against algorithms. Take it from me, unless you want to go broke. Right. Right. Excellent. Um, I I think that's everything. We've got it uh, all uh, all. Uh, squared away here. Um, th thanks so much, Scott. I mean, uh, really great information here. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll, guys, I'll have. It's going to take me a little longer today to get this recording up. I need to go back and edit it, etc. So uh, you know, bear with me on that. Um, you know, probably by this evening we'll have it up. Um, but uh, it, one more time, I'll put into the chat here Scott's uh, information uh, if you want to contact him. Um, other than that. Um, uh, really, uh, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, a, a pleasure. Uh, really great stuff here, uh, and uh, can't wait to have you again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bruce. I hope I uh, made some sense to some traders, and just you know, have them remember keep it simple. And you know, if you're going to trade, you you need to be using Bookmap if you want to be on a level playing field. Because you're, if you're not, you're missing the most important piece of information in trading, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making us blush again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, thanks scott uh, thanks have, have a good weekend uh, everybody and uh, we will uh, we'll catch up another time thanks bruce appreciate it okay all right bye-bye